Hey everybody, how you doing? I haven't made a video in a long time, so I figured I'd make a video on this power supply I just put together for a licensed ham radio operator. Um, he needed a supply for his tube type RF amplifier. Okay, so here we have the two play transformers. This plate and one of these transformers came out of a new Henry RF generator. I have a surplus of these transformers, so I took a second one and I drilled and tapped four holes to mount the second one in parallel with the first one. So now I have 4,000 volts AC in total at 2 amp CCS, 8 kVA. You have two 8 microfarad 8 kilovolt DC capacitors wired in parallel, so now have a total of 16 microfarads at 8 kV DC. We have the glitch resistor right there. I have over 100 of these things. They're just awesome. They're all my core rib type. I have yet to have one fail. So I use them all over the place. Um, I also have a bunch of these. These are the, uh, uh, this is the full wave bridge rectifier. Um, I have everything wired for 240, so the load is equal on the line on the 240 circuit that will feed this. Also now I don't need a neutral wire, just have the two hots and ground, a three conductor cord. That's a uh, isolation slash step down transformer. The uh, blower in the guy's RF deck runs off of 120, so this actually steps the uh, 240 down to 120. Um, it's a uh, fan, a uh, muffin type fan, draws hot air out of the cabinet where the cool air enters the front, which is down lower. So cool air from the floor gets sucked in, hot air gets sucked out. The James Millen connector, which carries the close to 6,000 volts DC to the RF deck. It's isolated from ground with a piece of Teflon. There's a twist lock connection which carries the 120 and the ground and also the 26 volts which fire the 26 volts fires the relays the 120 fires the uh, I should say powers the fan and the ground is just a, an extra ground to ground the RF deck to the actual power supply section. So there are two 100 amp Supercon type connectors they carry the power for the filament. It's the filament transformer, center tap for the filament transformer. You have the uh, 26 volt supply, regulated supply, 12 volt regulated supply. Used all Teflon wiring, minus I voltage uh, cable, which is GTO type cable, ready for 15 kV DC. Or it could be easy. Let's see, 15,000 volts. This says 15,000 volts GTO-15. So, bleeder, uh, bleeder resistor values have been changed. Mercury contactors have been changed to ones rated for more current than the ones that were mounted to this bracket. So everything in here is different minus that transformer. Um, use the reuse the bracket, repurpose the bracket, the plate, and then one transformer. So we have a 6.3 SOOW rubber cord. So this amplifier has a different type of soft start. A lot of people use a time delayed soft start. I saw another video where a guy uses. Um, a heating element, um, that's what Henry used in well, I think almost all of their amps, their console amps, which is okay. Um, but uh, the reason why they use that type of soft start is because they usually had a resonant choke or swinging choke, and they had a lot less total bleeder resistance. So there was a lot, um, there was more of a load across the the um, rectified uh, plate um, 
supply, then what you would need with a supply that did not have a, a choke like that. So this supply has a lot more total resistance, so you don't have to worry about having that type of soft start. Um, the problem with that type of soft start is if there is a short across the secondary, you have to worry about the main breaker interrupting the um, voltage to the primary of the trans of the plate supply. With this type of soft start, you basically have a relay with a 240 coil. You still have one contactor that when you turn on the main switch, it engages, um, allows uh, one side of the primary to get the full 120. Once again, the primary of the transformer is 240. One side of the primary gets the full 120. The other side of, of uh, the primary um, goes to the second contactor to one side of it and um, goes to one side of the 20 ohm resistor, the other ohm mic core of 20 ohm resistor. And the opposite end of that resistor connects to the other side of the plate primary and at that junction it also connects to the other side of the relay with the 240 coil. There is also a fuse in series with the resistor and the second mercury contactor. So if there happens to be a short on the secondary of the plate supply, this little tiny 3 amp glass fuse will pop. See? 3 amps. So instead of having a large circuit breaker to interrupt the fault current, you now have a small 3 amp fuse. Um, so it's a, it's a great setup. I'll put the link that describes it in detail in the information section um, of the video. There's the meter dropping resistor. The high voltage meter, proper Dale type. And that's about it. I have uh, two fuses that protect the um, all of the other supplies, you know, the supplies that draw less current, so if there's an issue, um, the fuse will just pop. And if the fuse pops, it illuminates. Um, the wire um, that I use, the Teflon wire, is rated for more current than what the fuse is um, rated for, so I would never have to worry about any sort of fire. Um, just always boils down to the math, really really not rocket science um, not the best at explaining but as they say the proofs in the pudding let's fire it up you know you can see the shop lights um, so while I fire it up uh, we'll see if they dim it all See, it's almost instant. Let bleed down. I'll actually remove the fuse. See, now the fan turns on. The other supplies are on. But the plate is not on. I'll put the fuse back in. Man. And this is actually set up so if the plate were to not engage, um, 26 volts, um, actually one, on one of those contacts, one of the unused contacts, uh, 26 uh, volts um, runs through it. So once the relay engages, it allows the 26 volts to go up to the RF deck. So um, if the plate doesn't come up, 
um, the uh, RF deck will not key. And there are all sorts of other things you could do, you know, like a delay off timer for the blower, um, regulated supply for the filament, but you know, this boils down to money. But um, this is what you get for what he paid. That's about it, everybody. Well, like I said, this will work, but this is better. Because if you have a short across your secondary, you don't have to rely on a big circuit breaker. Um, at least I'd <laughs> so much damage can be avoided by having this type of soft start. And you don't have to wait. It comes right up. Bam. Nothing. No dim. No, no surge. Nothing. Instant on. So, like I said, you know, if you have a, a choke, resident choke, swinging choke, whatever, you have a heavy load across the secondary due to your bleeder, the amount of bleeder resistance you have, then you will need this with a, a delay on relay. But this way is actually cheaper and it's better since you only need that relay and one resistor and a fuse. I want to add a couple things here. I forgot to mention that this open frame relay actually controls the second contactor. When that relay closes, it applies the, the coil voltage to the second contactor, and that contactor, the resistor is actually in parallel with that contactor, so when that contactor closes, it shorts out that resistor, taking it out of the circuit. I also want to add that the reason why this circuit would be necessary, the one with the with the heating element, you know, when you know, with uh, less total resistance across the rectified B positive, is because uh, with less total resistance, you'd have more of a load on the secondary of the plate supply, which would end up requiring more current draw on the primary, which would um, cause that resistor to drop the the voltage to the switch side of the primary and then the open frame relay would not close so um, but like I said since the supply doesn't have a resonant choke or swinging choke I do not need that type of soft start I can get away with this type of soft start so just wanted to clear that up another thing this supply weighs over 250 pounds I want to show that I have a, a piece of six ply plywood and I used carriage bolts to carriage bolt the cabinet down to it and also four carriage bolts to bolt the plate to it. So it's through bolted through the plywood, the cabinet, and the plate. Um, so that's about it. Thanks for watching.